Hi, welcome to Don's Key Tech. In this video, I am going to show you my Arduino powered fingerprint door lock security system that uses the ESP32 microcontroller. I have here my ESP32 and connected to it is my R307 fingerprint sensor. Also, there are several components that we need to control such as the relay and my solenoid door lock and my buzzer here also. At the same time, I have a bench power supply that will supply 12 volts of DC to power my solenoid door lock. For demo purpose, I'm going to authenticate using my right thumb. I have enrolled my right thumb into the flash system of this R307 sensor. So, let's try. As you can see, my door lock automatically opens and then it closes after 5 seconds. I configured it to close automatically so that I can retry the fingerprint authentication again. Let me try my, my right index finger. So, as you can see, it was able to open again the door. Now, I'm going to try my left index finger and let's verify what will happen. As you can see, there was a sound coming from our buzzer that my, I am not authenticated to end. What's cool about this project is that aside from the sound that you are hearing and the movement of the solenoid door lock, I have created a web application that will display the real-time result of the fingerprint validation. So, if I try scanning my right thumb again, as you can see, there is a message here that access is granted. And then, when the door lock automatically closes again, you would see that you can, it, is, it tells you that you, you need to scan again your finger. So, let me try one of my other finger, which I have not yet enrolled. So, I am expecting that this will be access denied. As you can see, the message here says that I am access denied. Let me try one more time. Okay, it says that still I am access denied. Let's try the valid finger. So, it means that the validation is automatically sent into my web application. Would you like to know how I did this? Then let's start exploring. So, this image shows the different components of our project and how they participate in our Arduino-powered ESP32 fingerprint door lock security system. Essentially, there are three major components in our project and they are the ESP32 and the web server, the hardware components which contains the R307 fingerprint sensor, the relay, the buzzer, and the solenoid door lock. And I have here the web application. The purpose of the web application is to show in real time the result of the fingerprint validation. So, as you can see from the diagram in here, the ESP32 is the one that communicates with all the co components in here and it checks the result of the validation of the R307 fingerprint sensor. Whatever the result, it tells the relay to open or close and the relay will be the one to control the door lock. What is important to see from this diagram is also is this server sent events. If you have been an avid reader of my blog post, then you have, might have seen me create countless applications that uses WebSocket. However, WebSocket is a bi-directional web technology wherein the server in this case, the ESP32 and the client, which is the browser, communicate simultaneously. Server sent events, on the other hand, is a server push technology 
and are unidirectional. So messages are coming from the server, but the browser cannot reply back. Judging from the design of our application, the use of the server sent event is applicable for our use case. So below image is the wiring diagram of my ESP32 and my R307. I have a separate video that explains how to interface with an R307 and I will put that in the description of this video. For the other components that are connected to my ESP32, I have used a Node MCU and ESP32S. So all you have to do is just follow the wiring in here. I have put the schematic also so that you can follow along how I wired my project. So now that I have shown you the wiring and schematic, let's go now to how the, the program works. So I have used the platform I.O. extension in Visual Studio Code in programming this particular project. So the code is available also in my GitHub repository, which you can find at the description also of this video. The important parts of this project are the data folder and the main.cpp. The data folder contains my HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files, while the main.cpp contains the logic that will handle the interface between the different components in my project. Let's start first with the index.html. Index.html is basically a web application that displays the status of the fingerprint validation. It, the important part of this HTML page is this HTML div. As you can see, this HTML div contains the information that will tell you what message should be displayed. In our case in here, the default is to scan your fingerprint. But at runtime, I can change this to access, de access denied or access granted. So let's go now to our index.js file. The job of the index.js file is to handle the server sent events that is coming from our ESP32 web server. At the same time, it updates the messages that you are seeing in here. It's really easy how this index.js works. You only need to define an event source which will handle our server sent event. Once the event source is created, we now have to add an event listener. In our case in here, we are very much interested into four different messages. One is the no fingerprint, the other is the access granted, access denied, and the unknown error. These events will come from our ESP32 web server. So if there is no fingerprint that is currently being scanned, then the ESP32 will push a server event that will tell you that there is no fingerprint. What we're going to do is that show that message into our web application. Now, the access granted, access denied, and the unknown error will be pushed by the ESP32 web server when the validation is finished. So for example, if the fingerprint is allowed to access our system, then the access granted event it will be pushed by our ESP32 web server. On the other hand, the access denied will be pushed whenever the security is not allowed for that particular user. The unknown error will just be pushed by the ESP32 server when there is an unknown error that happens during the fingerprint validation. The show message, as you can see in here, is a function that will remove the attribute class and then add again the class list in here. The reason why it is removing and adding the class is because in my index.css page, I have here the changes in the background color. So if it's an info or an error or a denied or asked or granted, I change the background color by using this CSS style class. Now, let's go into the more important files of our project, which is the main.cpp. The main.cpp does the heavy lifting for our project. And it does the communication with our 
the air queen sensor, the our solenoid door lock, relay, buzz, and debuzzer. So let's scan through what each line of code does. As you can see, I import the header library for us to communicate with our fingerprint and create a web server using the ESP async TCP IP. The library that I'm using in this project is listed in the library dependency of the platform.in9 file. After the declaration of the header files, then you need to change the SSID to match your network configuration. Next, we define a web server and a e server sent event using these two classes, which is the async web server and the async event source. The hardware serial port and the adapt root finger is how you're going to communicate using the serial port 2 or the UART 2. I have a separate video that explains how to communicate with an ad with a R307 fingerprint sensor using this adapt root fingerprint library. I have here a forward declaration of the functions that we will be needing in this project so that it will not encounter any compilation error. The function not found is just being called when some, when a resource that is not present in the server is being called. Uh, this interval is being used to scan the fingerprint and at the same time close the solenoid door lock after 5 seconds. This is the declaration of the relay and the buzzer pin. In the setup function, we just initialize our serial monitor and connect to our Wi-Fi. When the Wi-Fi is connected, we now initialize our file system, which is the SPIFFS, and we set up the server sent event. And then after which, when we set up the server sent event, we start our server. As you can see, I have here several routes that will serve our resources. So for the root route, I am serving the index.html page while the CSS and the JS are being served by this static, serve static function. When everything is okay, then we can now communicate with our fingerprint sensor. If we are successful, then we can print the parameters that was set in our R307 fingerprint sensor. The fingerprint sensor will now check if there is any fingerprint that was enrolled. In, in, and if there's none, then you need to enroll first the valid fingerprint. Once the fingerprint is validation is okay, we now can initialize the digital pins of our buzzer and relay pins. In the loop function, this is where we first check if the door lock was open and we need to close it up after 5 seconds. Next, the next if close here, we'll check if we need to read the our R307 fingerprint sensor. As you can see, it calls the function get fingerprint ID and it, it checks what is the result. So for example, if we call the get fingerprint ID and it says no finger, then there's there will be a message in the serial monitor that you need to scan your fingerprint. And then at the same time, we'll send a server sent event with the value of the event no fingerprint and the message is scan your fingerprint. While at the same time, if the message that is returned is fingerprint OK, then we will send an event that says access granted and the message access granted. While the not found means that it is not, the access is denied when the message access is denied. If some errors or issues is encountered while reading the R307 sensor, then we'll just print the unknown error event and the message unknown error. So this is basically how server sent event is being used in this project. The get fingerprint ID function basically reads our fingerprint sensor and then at the same time it will check using the finger that finger search if the fingerprint is map found or not. And the last function show not allowed will just sound the buzzer if the access is denied. And this is being called the fingerprint not found in here. So if access is denied, then we will sound our buzzer. So basically, that is all.
how our project works. The write-up, the code, and the explanation for each of these lines is available also in my GitHub repository and in my blog. You can find the link to both of these in the description of this video. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!